Word nerd. Wordsmith. Wordy. Wordless. Oxford Dictionary says a word is a single, distinct, meaningful element of speech or writing, used with others or sometimes alone. We say each one matters. No extra words is literature, minimalist style. And we're getting you right to the story. Rollerblading in Venice by Julie Christine Johnson The brine of midnight tide stipples the air. Melody fastens her elbow pads and drops the black market crystal V's over her eyes. An inset screen on the upper right corner alerts her to the presence of blood brothers near the dried-out shell of the old marina. The night goggles have a radar warper. The BBs couldn't detect her through the satchan. She'd make herself scarce if they got close enough for a visual. Melody cruises down the center of South Venice Boulevard, her turquoise and silver hair pulling free from the tangle of tiny braids. If there were still such a thing as traffic, she'd be going against it. She dances in and out of the imaginary herd of vehicles, shifting her hips this way and that, twirling on her wheels. Ralston, the rubbish roper, who keeps the same nocturnal hours, salutes Melody as she flies past. You're on the wrong road, he calls as he does every night. If he changes his habitual greeting, it means danger is near. The night creatures look out for each other. No one becomes friends, yet they maintain an unwritten code of honor. Just before the road becomes beach, she lets momentum carry her around the corner. The carcass of the arched promenade is all that remains from the tsunami of seventeen. Melody draws her feet into a tee, coming to a soundless stop in front of a black hole that was once a bookstore. Books aren't real, she'd complained when her dad dragged her here on yet another Sunday afternoon. When there were still Sunday afternoons. When there was still her father. I don't want to read. Now there are no books left, but each night Melody sits in front of the emptiness, picturing the words that once were. Wholesale by Jeff Bockinson. First went the naming rights to the schools. My own alma mater, Desert View High School, became Boss Digitech Academy. Our crosstown rivals, Arcadia, were rebranded Universal Distribution Center. Then consultative edited textbooks were approved, and suddenly Lucy, that's our daughter, was telling her mommy and me how George Washington wouldn't have been able to cut down a Lambert Steelstrong trademark cherry tree, or how, definitively, his crossing would have looked captured on a Nikon. That's a phrase we've all started using to mean when something is true to life, captured on a Nikon. Next, the city parks were auctioned off and started charging admission. The art museum was liquidated, as were the instruments of the symphony orchestra. Obviously, we weren't going to disarm the police, but we did for a time allow advertisers to dress individual policemen at a rate based on arrests per month. Now we're back to letting them dress themselves. The city council wasn't so daft to miss the symbolism in renting out space in City Hall to corporate pirates, so they sold the building from the foundation up. Some suckers in Canada bought it lock, stock, and barrel, picked it up with half a dozen helicopters, and flew it away. You probably wonder how things got to be this bad, but there's no easy answer. Some poor decisions were made, to be sure. Monies routed into the wrong hands, risks taken without heeding the signs, advice was given and not followed, or followed slavishly. Looking back, we're not always sure which. At least our elected officials are finally taking responsibility, and one by one have bravely sold themselves into bondage. My neighbor, the county assessor, is right now working off our vig with a Japanese gangster. I'll never forget the tears in his eyes as he spoke from the steps leading to the toothless spot where City Hall had stood. When he was done, two salarymen came and stuffed him into a waiting Dotson. We've promised ourselves to be thriftier, and we know this means that certain items will be cut. I just wish they'd kept a few behind when they sent all the garbage men to Nicaragua for the picking season. The trash is calf deep along Alameda Street, and we have to shuffle to avoid breaking bottles on our way down to work. 
Surely there is a way to get them back. This is still a free country, after all. Hello there, welcome to No Extra Words, the Flash Fiction Podcast. My name is Chris Baker Dirsch. I'm your producer and editor. I used to have to place sci-fi books with kids who were reluctant readers. As a school librarian, this was part of my job, was to take these kids who didn't read very well or very much or like reading, and they had to write book reports in genre. And Science Fiction Month was what I used to dread, because they just don't make those high-low, hundred-page books for teenagers that are designed for these reluctant readers in the genre of sci-fi. And I used to bang my head against the wall and wonder why not? Like, why can't this kid who doesn't read well and can't get three through 300 pages read sci-fi? And my sci-fi friends would tell me, well, it's the world building. It takes time. You can't world build in 100 pages. And I'm completely in love with this episode because it's showing that you can do dystopia and you can do world building and you can do something completely different in 500 words. And so that's awesome. I, I love, love, love this episode. And this is the way I used to describe dystopia to my students as a genre. I used to say dystopia is the future is here and is not good. And that is what today is. And what's interesting is today is really about the near future. Like if you listen closely in those first two stories, they not happen that far in the future. Apparently dystopia is coming at us fast. So hold on and enjoy life while you've got it. I really, really love those first two stories and their sort of view of what happens to the world. It's very spooky, especially in an election year. There's this image where they're melting down the, or they're um, liquidating is the word they use, the art museum, and they're liquidating the instruments the symphony plays. And in my head, they're like literally liquidating, like throwing it into a fire. I don't know if that's the intention, but that's the way I read it. Coming up at the end of this episode, you have two more stories that are also a little bit futuristic and a little bit crazy about the way the world is built. Sean Antoniak's story is simply called Progress. Um, has a little bit of a Wally feel to it. And then at the end of this episode, you're going to hear Gabe Congdon's amazing reading of his story, Grow Jesus. The story's hysterical and his reading of it is just completely awesome. He reads it himself. Stick around for that. It's going to be a good one. And that's Gabriel Congdon with Grow Jesus to finish us off today. But before we get to all that, we are still in the height of Contributor Appreciation Month here on the No Extra Words podcast, which means there's going to be a prize drawing. Woohoo! It's going to happen in just a second. Um, Thank you very much to our Contributor Appreciation Month sponsor, Chanillo, which is C-H-A-N-N-I-L-L-O dot com. I actually, I was struggling for the figures when I did this last time, so I actually looked it up. When you subscribe to Chanillo, and it's cheap, subscriptions start at like five bucks a month. When you subscribe to Chanillo... 80% of what you pay them goes to the writers who are creating the content. So you subscribe to a set number of series and you can get short stories, you can get nonfiction, you can get journal entries, you can get columns. Chanello takes 20% and then 80% of your subscription money goes to those authors. So it's a great way to read fun new content and to support authors. It's a wonderful platform. They are giving away a few free subscriptions to our contributors for being awesome and sponsoring us this month. I hope you will stop by their website and check them out. A couple of series that I'm currently enjoying on Chanillo. There's one by Becky Ellsworth that is called Whispers from the Wind, and I think it's the kind of thing that writers love to read. It's a writer who decides one day that her life is unsatisfying and she takes the big leap to leave her job and go and write full time. And it's got real depth to it that I appreciate. And then there's a series that just launched. I just read the first installment. It's by a writer, Gideon Finn, and it's called About Damn Time. It's short stories, but they feel a lot like book chapters. I think the idea is each chapter is supposed to read a little bit like a sitcom episode. So you're building over time, but each is a self-contained story. And basically this family's life has gone horribly wrong. So they have to turn their dream home into a bed and breakfast. So that series just launched. I just checked out the first episode. Those are a couple of examples of what's out there on Chanillo. I'm also working on a novel there right now um, and a couple of other things that I'm reading episode by episode. So go on, check them out. And they are sponsoring this drawing that I'm about to do where we're going to give a prize away to someone who has contributed a piece of fiction to the No Extra Words podcast. 
my super high tech drawing system, my mixing bowl is now on the desk. I seriously tried to make a salad for dinner and couldn't because this mixing bowl was down here. I mixed a salad in a pot for you guys. This is what I'm doing for you. And I'm stirring up my entries. One entry per contributor to the show, a couple extra entries for some folks who gave us some social media love. And I'm reaching in, I'm pulling out a paper. There should be a drum roll backing me up. And this week's winner is Sarah Mitchell Jackson. Congratulations, Sarah. Sarah has a great short story coming with us in March. She will be on episode 39. So Sarah gets a Chinilla membership and a couple of other great prizes. Sarah, if you're listening, shoot me an email, no extra words at gmail.com, or I will get in touch with you and we will talk more about your prize. We are going to do two more of these drawings over the next two episodes. So be listening to learn more about these contributors that win. Coming up next, progress, and then you're going to want to stick around to hear Gabriel Congdon read Grow Jesus. Have a great week. I will see you guys next time. Progress by Sean Antoniak. Tink, tunk, tink, tunk, hss, kachunk. The alloy leviathan halts. This is a miss. This is not the way it should be. What is this aberration of sterilization? This foreign object that dares to break through the desolate ground and scream out in defiant laughter against all this world's beliefs. The dusty field stretches for miles hundreds of miles, broken only by the crumbling flat-topped mountains some two hundred miles away. Soon they too would be gone. Two hundred miles away, an armada of automated landscrapers, drillers, trucks, crushers, and many other soldiers of destruction are busy rattling along, demolishing the mountains. For what use is a mountain? It only serves as an impedance to progress. Mountains slow transportation. Mountains slow development. Why were they not destroyed long ago, in pre-intelligence times? What did the naive humans keep them around for? M8017 towered over the small blight of nature. His 15 feet of alloy, miles of wires, tons of silicone, and thousands of sensors cast a shadow of death over the six inches of spindly green fiber, topped with a disgusting array of tiny yellow petals. What business had this organism to dare permeate the membrane of uncontaminated white sand, climbing brazenly toward the dim, burning ball in the heavens? As M0817 stooped, a cascade of vulgar hisses and whirs ruptured the momentary silence. The frail flowers swayed lazily back and forth, showing no signs of fear. M8017 cast a long, sleek limb out and curled three massive titanium talons around the flower. M8017 stopped. Something deep in the programming. Something. Maybe an original file. From the original creation. Somewhere in the tangle of wires and silicone was an image. An image of a field full of these little flowers. And two small humans running, their mouths bowed awkwardly at the ends as if something about these objects brought pleasure. Pleasure? How could one derive pleasure from something so... so so useless. As the dim sun cast a hazy glow on the small curiosity, M8017 paused momentarily. Perhaps society was wrong. Perhaps there were uses beyond utilitarian. Perhaps, despite trillions of lines of code and binary operations, they had missed something. Society is here for progress, not distractions. Hiss karunk! The claws tore into the ground and pulverized all six inches of the spindly stalk, the yellow ornament, a dried clump of arid soil, and the wispy tangle of roots. Kachunk hiss, tink tunk, tink tunk, progress. Jesus. It was a miracle. There I'd be 
the miscellaneous aisle of the Goodwill on a Thursday at 4 o'clock. And who should be hanging from a hook and staring at me through a plastic tome? Grow Jesus. How would nobody nab this? You don't even have to buy it. You can just put it in your pocket. I guess Providence isn't just the capital of Rhode Island. The back of the packaging stated emphatically that this was an adult novelty and not intended for children, as the second label affirmed that Jesus, for the children, instant choking hazard. So I had to send my son to time out for arbitrary reasons that weren't lost on him. After an hour's soak, he'd already filled his water glass. I moved him to the vase, but his solemn eyes soon peered at me through my bouquet of irises in a creepy way. My son peeked his head from time out, chewing on a figurine of Krishna. Can I come out? Read the packaging. No kids. You don't have to stay in time out, but you can't stay here. As my child wandered the neighborhood, I drew a bath and curled up to the man-sized Jesus. And <clears throat> who's to say if under the influence of candlelight and says our Frank, if something didn't happen between Lily and I, <sighs> I can feel you grow. My neighbor's neighbor was very obliging to my request, as he should have been, for divorce had carved up his life something fierce, and he was in desperate need for his above-ground pool to be occupied by something other than pine needles and bad memories. The squishy Jesus stood a little shorter than the power lines. It's like having Rio de Janeiro in your backyard. After he'd sponged up the last droplets of chlorine, Grow Jesus had to go, lest he befell Paul Bunyan's fate. I'd been going through my own monster truck rally of divorce and desperately needed to rent a logging truck with my brat kid and transport the pine-sized prophet to the edge of the continent. I docked the SS Jesus and the tide slowly began to tow him out to sea. I can't stop now. Not after all we've been through. We set up camp in the clavicle notch and were amazed to watch it grow from a divot to a crater. Grow Jesus is island size. It takes a full day to get to the toes. Last time we trekked it, we began to see other dwellers. They were surprisingly hostile, considering where we were. One nice fellow said that with the icebergs already on the electric slide... Jesus' oceanic absorption only made things much worse, and that each nation's army wanted to set fire on the floating kingdom, but were too scared to set fire on a floating miracle, so attacked one another instead. A mystic in the left knee capital prophesies that all things grown shall one day shrink, and true, that's what the packaging stated. But when the asteroid hit, Jesus made for a divine cushion against the impact. Note by the author. Alien historians cite that a decapitated foam Jesus had floated through space until the head happened upon the gravitational orbit of Pluto and became its new moon. All of us Jesus dwellers perished, sure, but the Earth itself, somehow, some way, survived. Thanks for listening to the No Extra Words podcast. For more information on today's stories and contributors, or to learn how to submit your own work, please visit us at noextrawords.wordpress.com. The best support you can give the show is to recommend us to your family and friends. See you next time.